The year is 1942 and Denmark is occupied. The occupying forces want to send the unemployed abroad either as soldiers or as forced laborers. In order to mitigate that, the local authorities try to come up with major projects and one of them is the first instance of urban redevelopment, the Noble Street area. To design the new buildings, they appoint professor at the Royal Academy of Arts School of Architecture, Kai Fisker, and his long-standing partner, C.F. Möller. The two had been working intermittently with each other for a decade, and they chose to construct four buildings around an open public square. Typical features here are the avoidance of cantilevered balconies, instead using a pigeonhole approach, and the mix of yellow and red bricks. The mix of red and yellow bricks can be traced all the way back to their first collaboration. As you can see, the horizontal bands of red follow the windows and the yellow the spaces in between. This was a feature copy from Fisker's earlier project together with Nye, a project that turned out to be his only without Fisker in Copenhagen, but he is well known for other projects in other parts of the country. The balconies were added later, and it might be convenient for the people living there, but it does cloud the architectural image the avoidance of street type balconies is a feature you find all through Fisker's career. And as you can see here, they have instead enclosed the whole thing within the building. They did allow balconies on the neighboring building though, but this is more to do with the construction site being so narrow that there were no real room for balconies in the interior yard. Now with the very fine curvature of the entrance to the parking garage and the use of alternate color around entrances. With the Nuremberg yard, they chose to break up the large rectangle into three very long blocks. Here they did employ the cantilevered balconies, even with two for each apartment, but that has more to do with fire safety regulations. Saints Ball is much more true to form, even if a later addition of the top floor has disturbed the image. The idea of having the building turn inwards, you see here with all of the balconies and the gates turning into the interior yard, whereas street side you will only find windows. Counter example we see here. This is because on the other side of the street there is no buildings, instead, there is a lake, and this location attracted more wealthy clients. The first major project of Kai Fisker in Copenhagen was this massive plot of flats on the corner of Wolf's Lee, Stephen's Game. The complete lack of variation across the facade is something that we're going to see from him again and again. The only ornamental part being the framing of the windows. The same framing is much more noticeable here at Fort Bekut because the building has not been plastered. You do see some variation here because the ground floor has been designed to accommodate shops. What you cannot see is how integral part the garden is of the building complex because there is no access from the outside to the garden. This shutting out the street is a typical feature. Here we have another example where the framing has been reduced to being only around the entrances. This forbidding expression has been extended even to the doors. Notice the position of the door handle. This doorway is designed to make you feel small. This image of inapproachability 
combined with the lattice works of the windows and actual bars in front of the basement windows has led one of his other buildings to be nicknamed Sing Sing. It simply looks like a prison. This turn your pack on the street approach we also see here a quick Aragorn which he designed together with SC Larsen. This time though mitigated by the fact that it's not a whole block but you can walk directly into the gardens. Another building that he designed together with SC Larsen is Amabo and as you can see it has a completely different expression. Not only has it been plastered but you can also see there is a variation in the height of the building and the entrance area has been promoted vertically. A much more friendly approach we see here at Yachtgorn, which he designed together with Kevin Hunt. Not only is there a bigger variation in the building, it's also broken up into smaller units. Contemporaneously with his collaboration with C.F. Müller, Kafiska did make a number of other projects in Copenhagen. One of them was on the corner of Koindalens Parkway, Grothofsvej, and this being on a slope, he decided not to encase the garden completely and left it open towards one side. Further down the road, he chose an approach not unlike Nürnbergorn, although the blocks are much shorter and not as broad, and there are four of them. At Gaffensvelskade, which he designed together with Eske Christensen, he chose a similar approach, although there is a slight curvature to the single block. It was also during this period that he designed one of the few non-residential buildings. This was the Institute of Radiology, better known as the Finsten Institute. A more radical solution was Heinzhusen, which he designed together with Erik Jensen. From the street you can see two buildings that were joined together. What you can't see, there is further six behind them. To top it off, the whole area, which was his first stint at dense low residential, is fenced in. The only access you have to the whole area is at the end of this long block. After Müller dropped out of Copenhagen, Fisker continued with a number of projects the biggest of which was Volparken. 30 blocks and more than 400 apartments comprised the neighborhood, complete with a community school, the only one he ever designed. His focus all the time had been on residential buildings, and with the changing of times, he also allowed a more open design, like here at Fulgorn or Bastogers Hale, but his disdain for balconies are still prevalent. The few balconies you see in this building was actually added later. He also found time to collaborate with other architects like Eskil Christensen, but you can still see his design with the framing of the windows and the brickwork in two different colors. And finally, together with Duro Mortensen, he designed a social institution for single moms. He continued working with Duro and Mortensen on a number of suburban residential projects, and through this and his other works, he inspired a generation of architects, especially when it comes to um, high-rise residential areas in suburban Denmark.